going for a walk. It's a gorgeous day. I've been doing a lot of housework today and playing beautiful music and just enjoying being at home, really. But it would be criminal not to go for a walk. So I'm actually going a different way today. We're going up the street I live in, live on. And it was midnight last night. That's a bit of riveting news. But there's a few views that are really beautiful. And I thought I'd come and come this way for a change and show you a different view. So there's sort of the, this is my street that I'm in at the moment, but you know, that's the kind of view that we get as we go up the hill and it gets better and better. So the people that own the house behind me, they own this block. And they've put benches and made it like a, a little nature reserve for the public to use. And sometimes I come here for whale watching because you get an amazing view, an elevated view. Um, and it's pretty special. And so when the whales are in, they quite often will either call me or run down and knock on the door and say, there's whales. And then we um, come up here and have a look. But I mean, have a look at the view from here. So they've put this bench in, even though they own this land, they've sort of made it like a little nature reserve for, for all the local people to use and it's over the road from my house so there's never going to be houses or anything built on this land um, at least not in my lifetime so I reckon that's pretty special if anyone's around today. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. Shit, what have I done? Where's the stream? Here it is. No, no one's joining me. That's okay. I need to do the exercise anyway, so I'm not going to stay on this bench, but I just wanted to show you that this is the view from the top of my street. Like, it's the next house. The house behind me. Oh, hey, Anne-Marie. How you doing, gorgeous? I just thought I'd go a different way today on my little daily walk and show you the view. So this is the top of my street on the other side of the road. There's one house behind me and they own this land as well and they've put in a little bench um, a long time ago but they've made it like a little reserve for the public to use. I mean it's pretty much just used by people that live um, you know in the street that I'm in or very close by. I mean, anyone is welcome to come here and sit on the bench. I'm well today. How are you doing, Anne-Marie, with your squeaky clean house? Oh, good. You're doing well. So, yeah, it's a pretty amazing view, isn't it, from just, you know, another, I don't know, 20 feet up the road from my place, or maybe 10 metres, I don't know. There's a couple of surfers out. Just lovely, and it's a gorgeous day. Um, down here heading for a top of 21 but everyone's a little bit on edge because it's Easter coming up and this this area where I live there's a lot of shacks. 
up? He said, hey, good day, Richard. Welcome, mate. Just showing you the view from the top of my street. I'm standing on my neighbour's block of land over the road, which they've sort of turned into like a little, um, like a privately owned reserve so people can come and enjoy this view. And it's a great spot for whale watching. And I thought, yeah, just give you a bit of change of scenery. So I'm going to walk over the hill down the other side, um, possibly then down to the beach. I'm not sure yet. Might go over to Red Ochre. But yeah, everyone's on edge down here because we've got so many people that own shacks and, you know, our government just keeps saying to people, don't go to your shacks at Easter. Um, but there's been a lot of reports of sh shack owners coming down late, at, like in the middle of the night and unpacking their cars into their shacks. More so from the next beach along from where I am. Um... And it sucks because, you know, they're people that are not doing the right thing. I don't want to turn into an asshole and start having to report. Well, not turn into an asshole. I mean, report, they're encouraging people to report anyone who's at their shack. Um, but I think it sucks that, you know, the onus is always on people who are doing the right thing, having to make calls and dob people in. It's a bit uncomfortable for me. Hi, Dream Weaver. How are you? Love our beautiful beaches. Are you in New South Wales? Thanks for sharing. I'm actually in um, Tasmania. Obviously not USA. would be shot for trespassing. <laughs> no, my lovely neighbours. I mean, look, this is the top of my street. So when I leave my home in my car, you're getting to see the views that I get. Um which I love. See, it was bin night, so apologies. There's a lot of bins out on the street. You'd be shot for trespassing in America. <laughs> no, they've very kindly made it a private, like a, they've, it's private land that they've made a public reserve. Like it's not a state park or reserve. It's a private one that the public can use. Does that make sense? Besides, they love me, so... If they saw me sitting over there, they wouldn't be upset. But it's a lovely place. I could, we get a lot of whales in at sort of the end, tail end of winter, when the water starts to warm up again. And it's so lovely um, sitting, sitting on the bed. How you doing? All rugged up with a cup of tea watching the whales. It's pretty awesome. Yes, I am walking on the street because it's a pretty quiet suburb where I live and um, or town and I'll hear a car coming. Not that there's many cars on the road these days. So there's heaps of different tracks we could take if we wanted to go back to the main beach. You guys have come on a few with me. Um, that's one way you can go. Oh, it's just so nice to get out in the sun and um, breathe that fresh air. Have you seen the beautiful stories coming out of like LA? They've got the cleanest air in LA now because no one's on the roads, or not no one, but most people aren't. I love those stories that are really um, making me happy. I love nat nature bouncing back stories at the moment. Cool combi, huh? Um, so beautiful not many people share Tassie with thank you where are you Dreamweaver yeah where do you live Dreamweaver now see I don't know what that is um, the gate's got a padlock but you can walk I wonder if it's private land <laughs> should we have a look I mean you can walk straight in I just want to see what the view's like from this spot. Yeah, it looks like it might be a private block. It's definitely a private property in front, but it'd be a pretty nice place to build your house on this block of land. Soak up that view. Oh, so you're up in Queensland, Dreamweaver. Yeah, we've, we've got a high of 21 today, which, you know, 
you usually should add about four degrees to a Tasmanian temperature for the mainland because we've got such a different climate. So it's probably like the equivalent of you having a 25 degree day. So it's kind of like one of your winter days. March, April, we always have lovely weather here. Um, had a really pathetic summer, but March has been great and April looking good so far too. So what's up, Groovers? You just witnessed Tori being removed. <laughs> I've never taken you guys on this walk before, so I'm sort of trying to make it fun. A bit of trespassing. And you can see it in the distance. I'll zoom in a bit, but Seven Mile Beach over there with the sand dunes. Um, when you drive into where I live, you see the other side of those, or well, that's actually the beach, but on the other side, it's sort of steeper sand dunes with pine trees. And it's one of those um, absolute take your breath away kind of views. So every time when I drive in at night, it's just so pretty. So pretty and I mean this town that I live in was when I was a kid some of my friends families had shacks down here but for the most part it was a um, housing commission sort of you know they used to put housing commission suburbs away from the cities it was one of those and all these um, groovers that were living down this way they didn't have to go into town to do reporting to Centrelink and they lived down in this amazing beachside community. And now, everyone wishes they were down here. It's only 35, 40 minutes out of Hobart, depending on traffic. Um, but it's far away enough that you do feel like you're on holidays every day. Obviously, a lot of people who live down here drive into town for work so we're now going to go this way I was going to keep going down the other way but it takes us quite a way away from the um, beaches and I've got to walk past a park and where all the boats and everything are I don't really want to so I'm going to go this way instead but look at this view guys G'day Ivor you don't need to watch me later Dales you're hanging out with me tonight remember hopefully uh, 28 29 in Brisbane I'm just gonna keep walking because this dog is bossy hey puppy that dog loves me but yeah look at this view groovers how gorgeous is it I can't see them Whoops, I was trying to zoom in now. I've probably typed something into chat. Yep, I did. Yeah, look at it. It's just like... So pretty. So pretty. Lots of tradies still getting heaps of work, which is so good. You know, like... All these people that keep screaming about lockdown Australia. It's like there's, there's still people that can work right now. I don't think people understand what a full lockdown is. Oh, look, it's down like New Zealand. Well, if you actually Google New Zealand's um, rules, they're exactly the same as here. They're not locked down. They're doing the whole self-isolating social distancing thing, but they're not locked down. I love it. Richard's narrating what's happening as we walk. Have a good day at work, Ivor. Stay safe, gorgeous. You remember living in Lonnie and the terror of dunk hunting, dunk duck hunting season on the Tamar that was a shock to a city boy I don't even, don't even know about that but I'm a southerner so you know I'll have to visit Tassie one day beautiful cheaper to go to New Zealand hey stop it Richard is it still warm hi Amy's Justice League yeah it is gorgeous it is it's 21 degrees Celsius today it's lovely it's not hot but it's lovely I've got a little skirt on and a lightweight sweater 
and a little tank top underneath if I need to do a little mid-walk strip. Um, but it's a beautiful day down here today. Cannot complain at all. But yeah, our little town's getting a bit concerned about um, people coming down to their shacks. That's the hot topic on radio. It's the main topic in our Premier's speech this morning. And good on him too. He, so many people are just not listening and still being fuckwits. And he's like, I didn't want it to come to this, but, you know, I've got to take the gloves off. This is bullshit. Stop doing this crap. So he's actually, you know, got really firm, but... Where I live, it's sort of a 50% permanent resident, 50% beach shack community. And, um, yeah, we've all been told, oh, you know, dob them in, dob them in if people are coming down to their shacks. And it's sort of like, well, they're, they are breaking the rules. They are doing the wrong thing. But I hate that kind of responsibilities put on people who are doing the right thing. It's not the government's fault. I mean, we're the ones that live down here and we know who's at their shack. But... Yeah, it doesn't go well. I mean, I'm such a nerd, you know. I wasn't a teacher's pet or anything like that, but I follow the rules. Um, but I, you know, I always feel like the people that are doing the right thing have to ring up the cops and say, there's some shackies next door. $16,000 fine, mind you. And they basically rock up and tell you to leave. And if you don't leave, then they arrest you. So it could be an interesting Easter. Um... What's the hot topic where everyone else is? Uh, US temps, no idea. I don't have my um, 68. <laughs> it's usually uh, Lady Pegasus. You know, all I remember from when I lived in the States is that 30, 32 Fahrenheit is zero Celsius. Pardon me, I'm getting the burps. I had a really yummy um smoothie for breakfast but I put some like a green smoothie but I put some protein powder in it and it was a vanilla cinnamon flavoured one which is yummy but um I keep doing horrible little burps <laughs> while I walk this is how not I'm never going to say bored but this is how ridiculous my day got the other day I googled do cats burp I figured if we're all in isolation it could be a good time to learn some facts and some things we've managed to somehow get through life without knowing so I... <laughs> yeah no I wasn't I was a troublemaker I still am I still am I wasn't a school prefect or anything like that I was I was a good student um, but I couldn't tolerate stupid people even when I was a kid <laughs> Like there's, there's stupid people that are stupid because they've got some deficiencies. I don't have an issue with those stupid people. The stupid people I have an issue with are the... And they're not stupid either. They just have deficiencies, right? Um, no, the stupid people are the people who apparently brain, have a brain and function and go to work every day. And, you know, raise children and do all that sort of shit. And then they're told to stay away from their shacks and they don't. They're the stupid people I don't like. So... I mean, she, those two girls that just walked past, one of them's wearing a bikini, so, you know, it's not cold. The bikini's probably a little bit um, optimistic, but I don't think they live down this way. If they did, they'd know how fucking cold the water is, and they wouldn't, they'd be wearing a wetsuit right now. I haven't gone down this way before down to this, I mean I've been down to this beach but I haven't gone down this path before my usual uh, neck breaking cross country journey that I do to get down on the beach and here's a very sophisticated um, set of stairs, I mean have a look at this follow the girls, I ain't following the girls, jammy little fuckers I've probably been out clubbing all night not social distancing I'm not going anywhere, anyone young in fact speaking of there's a group of there's a woman down here with four children, four little boys. Um, are they going to head this way? Because if they are, I'm going to go a different way. God, four boys. What a handful. I wanted four boys when I, back when I was really young and thought I'd have kids. 
if I was going to have kids, I wanted four boys. Now I look at her with four boys and just go, oh my God. Crazy. But fun, I'm sure. If you're into that kind of thing. Do, do your bidding, Richard. No. No. Computer says no. So these guys are frolicking down here in the... Um, the rock pools we've got on all of our beaches down here in winter from the 1st of March until 1st of December the dogs can be on the whole beaches but in summer like this beach is really popular in summer with um, kids like families with small kids because it's so calm it's not a rough surf beach like around the corner um, and so in summer they have a sort of restricted area. There's still a lot of space for dogs to frolic, but they just try to keep the dogs away from the ends of the beaches where all the families gather with their kids. God, these kids are all about, they're all stripping off, ready to have a swim. And there's another, there's another few kids through there too. Um, but yeah, look at that beautiful view. Isn't it gorgeous? These guys look like they're having a swim, so I'm going to go down and walk away along the other way, down to where we normally go. I was going to take you this way around the rocks, but... Uh, okay, so there's, yeah, there's families down here that are not obeying the social distancing rules. Which, you know, I'm not going to freak out about it because, Tazzy, we're doing okay here. We've just gone over 100 confirmed cases, but... 42 or 48 or something have recovered so we're doing okay we have got a cluster in a hospital up in the northwest up where I have a problem lives um, it's a bugger she's gone to work because we could have asked her a bit about what it's like up there but she was pretty angry yesterday I think because they had an online funeral they streamed a funeral and apparently there were more than 10 people at it which has been a restriction for a while now I mean, what my family member's funeral a few weeks ago was virtual and that. Yeah, there are only 10 people at that one. So I think she was saying that. Let's wait for the tide to go out a little bit. Look at these beautiful rocks sparkling in this. I mean, how pretty is this? Hey, Spacey. How you doing? You gave her granddaughters. Amy's just, please tell me, oh, I don't want to get my feet wet. I haven't taken my sneakers off yet. I'll just wait for the wave to go out and I'll go around and come back to you and chat. Um, so, what was the Amy wanted to know about Christmases in summer? Yeah, isn't it weird? Because it seems, I mean, it's normal to us. Good to see you, Spacey. Um... I mean, I love, I love all these beautiful rocks. This is such a Tasmanian-y kind of... When um, I was walking on the beach the other day, Ivor popped in and um, you can sort of certainly pick, I think, beaches from certain parts of Australia. They've kind of got unique features, but the sandstone in Tassie and the rocks and everything, I think, are a bit of a giveaway. But you're in Tassie. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've walked along beaches in New South Wales and Victoria that are kind of similar, but hey, look at that cool cave. Nature's beach umbrella right there. It's not really a cave, but that ledge, isn't it stunning? Stunning. I love that I get to show you so many different things each time we come down here too pretty as but yeah summer I mean it just Christmas in summer just seems I'll just sit here for a sec we're not we're not supposed to stop when we're exercising but um I'm in the shade so I can read chat so our family back when my parents and my grandparents were all alive we used to do traditional English Christmases and it snowed here on Christmas day one year like even though it was the middle of summer it did actually snow so that was quite fun. We actually had a white Christmas and that was at my house. Um, and I had a huge like deck. I was in an apartment above a house and my apartment took up about a quarter of the roof and the rest of the roof was just this gigantic deck. Um, and I'd set everything up outside and then it woke up on Christmas morning and it had fucking snowed overnight. 
and snow doesn't normally go down to sea level here but on that occasion it did so I ended up cramming all these people into this tiny little one bedroom apartment that I lived in but it was a great day we had a ball but yeah it was kind of weird so we used to do traditional ones but when my parents died um the three of us love seafood and we've done the sort of traditional Aussie barbie kind of seafood and a bit of a barbie um for the most part we keep it really low key I usually have it down at my place we all just go down to the beach go surfing go out on the boards um it's really good for my brother because he had such a full-on high profile job and it was nice for him to be able to just come down here and chill out uh, but last Christmas I just spent it with my sister which was so funny we were saying the other day like we really wanted to just hang out together as it turns out her husband was still halfway down to Antarctica and her kids chose to spend Christmas with their um their cousins up north and so in the end my sister and I spent Christmas Day together and we reckon it's one of the best Christmases we've ever had it was it was fantastic um and we had a traditional like we did the turkey and everything um but we were laughing saying oh my god we were really self-isolating even back on Christmas Day <laughs> you know no gatherings for more than two and all that sort of stuff uh, I am good spacey I am good um, hey D90 Bell how you doing Groover um, we still do have traditional English sort of Christmas cards with open fires and reindeer and all of that stuff but there's also heaps of Christmas cards with kangaroos and koalas with Santa hats on and Santa in board shorts with a surfboard and average temp on Christmas Amy's just this league well it depends where you live I mean for Tassie probably the average would be about 26 Celsius so a little bit warmer than today um, but you know other parts of the country could be having like a 40 or 50 degrees Celsius day like stinking friggin hot we do have different Christmas carols six white boomers snow white boomers it's a carol about six big fucking white kangaroos uh, I'm sorry Richard what happened Richard not coping very well be fine look with your head no it's not good for it's not good for heads I don't know and there's been a lot of really positive stuff happening in the mental health side of things. Um, our Premier launched a Stay Healthy, Stay Connected program yesterday. And if you go online and Google that, you'll find a link to a heap of um, websites and apps and things that you can be doing for your mental health. This bloody stand-up paddleboarding dude's just staring straight up my skirt, I think. I'm trying to keep myself tidy, but he hasn't didn't take his gaze off my crotch area the entire time he went past which is delightful <laughs> the things that happen on my walk um Rolf Harris yeah wasn't he a success you take your boys swimming yeah killing it in the kitchen see that's great that's great um and I I mean part of me going for walks is for my my well, huge part of it is for my own mental health but I also like, um, I'm going to go around to the point out there where the rocks are. Let's go that way for a change. Um, yeah, me going for walks is a huge part of my mental health, but it dawned on me a long time ago with my YouTube channel that I'm just taking my sneakers off, that, um, you know, I like that I can take people up for a walk with me. But YouTube's become quite stressful. Um... And I had to have a bit of a break from it a few weeks ago and probably will have another break from it soon because you kind of end up feeling like you're becoming a counsellor, which is, you know, I'm not trained to do that, but um, I certainly am more than happy to chat with people when they've got problems and so on. But I've been seeing quite a few big channels uh, who, who aren't like true crime channels, but people that just sort of are letting people into their homes to hang out with them and all that sort of stuff are starting to have breaks because everyone's affected 
by this. Everyone's missing things. Everyone's sacrificing things. Um, you know, everyone's got a lot going on. All of us are in the same boat. I mean, to different degrees. People have got, you know, health concerns or they're older and they're scared a bit more than most people would be. I mean, I lost a really close friend on Saturday. She died, not from COVID-19, but died. And I just feel that I need some time to grieve for her and do some healing and reflection. Um, but we get a, we're getting a bit of anger. I've had to take quite a few comments out, off from under my videos where people have just been angry about something in their world and I get it everyone's angry at some point like I said it's a bit like grieving you go through all these different stages of grief um but they're sort of lashing out at creators who are really just sort of trying to provide a place for people to hang out and support each other and like I said I'm happy to chat to people but I'm not equipped to give necessarily the best advice or the right advice um maybe I'm a bit naive but I sort of think well I'm offering a bit of friendship and companionship and showing you some pretty pretty parts of the world um but yeah it's for my own mental health I've really got to self-moderate my life a little bit and choose when I do and don't go live so I'm sort of conflicted a bit because I've only copped it on a small scale, but even on a small scale, it still feels really mean. <laughs> it's kind of like, well, I'm only opening up my world to people to make them feel good for a little while. I'm not opening up my world to be become a target of some shitty comments. Um, and this, in the same fact, the same vein, I got interviewed by a local radio station because we had so many people down on the beach a few weeks ago. And the interview was not was like 40 seconds. And it was pretty much, were there heaps more people at your beach than usual? Yep, pretty much. Are there signs down there asking people to stay safe, stay home, save lives? Yep. I've copped so much shit on Facebook for that. So much shit. It's like, I'm being yelled at like I'm making the rules. Um... I went on the radio program because I wanted to try and help get the message out there that people need to just stay home. It's, it could be a matter of weeks, could might be a couple of months, but short-term sacrifice for the greater good. But yeah, I've copped a lot of shit about that. So I don't know, I've got a... Our mental health's really important, Richard. I was such very long-winded um, to get back to your point, and I'm so glad you're swimming because it's things like that, I think, that you know, are really, really good for us to keep doing. Um, we've all got to be kind to each other because we are all in the same boat. But at the end of the day, we're not in Italy. We're not in New York. We're not in a country at the moment that is getting, getting completely decimated where, you know, you've got a huge percentage of the population all grieving at the same time for people they didn't get to say goodbye to. So perspective I guess is the thing that I keep thinking that's the most sort of prolific word that keeps popping up in my thoughts you know I've got much to be grateful for I mean this this is not something I take for granted I feel very very safe I feel very lucky to be in such a great little part of the world and I also feel really lucky that I can go live and do this and sh share it with you. I'm just going to get up here and sh walk around the track up here, which goes behind those boat sheds. Oh, hello. I think I've got a new friend. <laughs> Do you want your stick? You left your stick. Not sure who this floof belongs to, but should should I steal him or her? I need to get up in the shade so I can read questions again or comments. Um, oh, you're chatty. Where am I? I'll oh, just go along this way a bit. 
Um, I'm just scrolling back down to you. I don't want to miss any of your comments. I can't back in the Christmas thing now. And the swimming. Tori, I appreciate it. There was a mention in media about mental health. I wrote to Beyond Blue and thanked them for keeping government informed. There's so many of us who cope normally, but it's only just, yeah, and I think it's great. I think it's great that governments are, um, you know, they're not, they're not missing anything. And people, I watched the Premier's daily press conference and people start complaining, oh, well, boo-hoo, who cares about horse racing? Well, I've um, boycotted horse racing for a long time, even though I grew up with a pair with grandparents who owned a horse farm. My dad had a had race horses. He was a trainer and a jockey in his younger years, and then a horse owner later on. And we spent a lot of time trackside as kids. Um, but at the end of the day, it's an industry that employs a lot of people, and also, you know, Australians are so heavily into their sport. So the Premier is sort of trying to cover any new amendments or changes to certain things and um, all these people whining in the chat going, well, who gives a fuck about racing? It's like, yeah, but when he moves on to talk about free childcare, you're all interested. You know, it's sort of, I don't know, I'm so conflicted. I'm seeing, I'm seeing so many good things happening, seeing the really good side to people, but also the really bad side to people. I was sort of hoping this global pandemic, because we are all in this together, the whole world, that this sort of NIMBY philosophy might fuck off. You know, the not in my backyard people who can't see beyond their own existences. And I think, I think that will change for a lot of people. I think some people it will broaden their horizons and the way they see the world and realise that we are just one massive big planet, but we're all connected. Um, but, yeah, there's a lot of nimbyism. If it doesn't, if it's not a topic that interests them, they're slamming the Premier for talking about it. It's like, but it's not just about you right now. None of this is, you know? No one's individual sort of opinions or rights are relevant at the moment. Hmm. I can either try and go down that way or I can see if I can get behind the boat sheds. Let's go this way. Never been along here before. I can actually read while I stand here though. Oh, we have the tracks up here. Cool. All right, let me just stop for a second. I'll read. Oh no. Hang on. Got to get back in the shade. Yeah, lots of positive vibes to everyone, Dwayne Weaver, including you, lovely one. Um, you will be fine, Richard, you and your wife. I mean, I... Um, I had to learn how to live with debilitating anxiety for the first time in my life last year and as fucked up as the situation was that got me into that predicament, I'm actually so grateful now that it happened to me because I've been basically given coping mechanisms and seen a psychologist for the first time in my life um, and still see her, and or at least on Skype. Um, and so it's weird. I went through the worst thing imaginable, ended up with debilitating anxiety, got taught some coping mechanisms, and then um, we're all in this weird, <laughs> unprecedented sort of global pandemic now. And it's, yeah, um, it's weird. In a, in a way, I'm grateful for all the shit I went through to learn how to manage anxiety. I feel very lucky. But that's also why I'm moderating my life a little bit and, um, you know, not not going live on YouTube because I feel I have to, but going live when I want to, when I know I'm in the right head frame to not be, not spend the rest of the day in tears because I tried to cheer people up and they decided I was somehow responsible for all of this. Um, thank you, Spacey. Oh, God, I've lost so many friends. It's just getting crazy. Um, but you know, then I keep thinking about families in Italy where there's like, you know, a family of 20 and 18 members have died. Um, again, I've got much to be grateful for and it was very, I mean, Michelle was sick, but no one expected her that she went downhill really quickly. Um,
<laughs> Your friend who lives in Tasmania was telling you. That's cool, Amy. Uh, you quit Facebook years ago, Richard. Yeah, look, I would too, except I started a community on Facebook over a decade ago for people who couldn't have children or people who chose not to have children. Um, there's 15,000 members. If I leave Facebook, that community vanishes and that community is supportive. Um, we lift each other up. You, the only rule really is to not abuse members and it's got a really beautiful community vibe and it's a it's an outlet for a lot of people a lot of people who are homebound that's their sort of world so I feel obligated to stay on Facebook to keep that um that community alive but oh my god you know there's a feature on Facebook now you can snooze people <laughs> oh I've been snoozing quite a few people I don't want to see them and what they've got to say. Um, you are all chatting away and I absolutely love it. Thank you, Spacey. I love you guys so much. I'm so, and I love you too, Richard. I love everyone. I'm so lucky to have the most sort of supportive, loving subs. Like, honestly, I just feel so lucky. I think I've been standing and chatting in a spot where there's no reception this whole time. <laughs> I think I'm at the end of chat now. So, how you doing? Isn't it a beautiful day? It is. Lovely, isn't it? We are so lucky to be here. We are. <laughs> Did you get some flatties? Yes. Nice. Yeah. Got a bit of fish barista, which is nice. Yeah, enjoy it. I cannot tell you how stunning this day is. You know, some days just... The, the temperature of the sun on your skin, the beautiful salty sort of sea breeze, the sound of all the birds, um, happy people that I'm encountering. Like it's just, it's just a day that you want to put it in a little bottle and put the cork on it and then whenever you need to feel this way again you can just take the cork off and, and then that sensation comes flooding back. So this is an unusual feature. It doesn't happen in Tassie a lot, which is a bit of a rock beach. Um, there's no sort of sand, obviously, in this bit. But I'm just going to take you guys along to the point because you'll get to see. It's fun going different ways each time. I keep trying to be a bit creative. And which way can I go? So this is the way we're going. And essentially, for those of you who have done walks with me on the big beach, the surf beach, when we walk towards the bluff, where all the surfers are, this is the bluff here. So we're on the other side of that bluff at the moment. Uh, snoozing people, it is a fabulous tool. Um, yeah, flatties. Yeah, 40, yeah, I think they're 38 a kilo here, Richard, like it's crazy when when we were kids you know we'd go to our friend's shack over summer and we would catch so many flatty and you couldn't give them away but now they're um yeah they're expensive it's crazy we get a lot of king flathead down this way um my brother-in-law went out with a commercial fisherman um because they need to have two people on the on the boats and this guy had to um, lay off some of his staff and some of his other staff have gone, you know, to where their primary residences are. Like a lot of his fishermen sort of lived on the boat and they'd do the working week and then go home and, and they went home and then we were all sort of told to stay at home. So he needed someone else to go on the boat and so Tim went and Tim's just come back from Macquarie Island and... Um, you know, coronavirus free island halfway between Tassie and Antarctica. And so he, um, and he has, he's been self isolating since he got home, so he wasn't positive. So anyway, they went on the boat and um, got a shitload of flatty, and they're selling it to, they've got like shitloads, they're selling it to their friends uh, for 10 bucks a kilo. So. Tim's pretty popular. Tim and Massey are pretty popular right now. Because, <laughs> yeah, they caught shitloads on their um, 
offering it to people for 10 bucks a kilo so that's pretty cool and again there's a nice little feel-good story right people are doing nice things like they're not going oh we were able to go fishing and we've caught all this fish and we're going to charge people quadruple they're, ch they're charging people fuck all which is great I don't know the name of this point. I did see that in, I can't stop at the moment because I'm navigating over the rocks, but um, I actually need to take my little sweater off. I'm getting a bit warm, but I don't know the name of this point. If you want to go on Google Maps, um, it's the bluff at the end of Carlton Park Beach. I'd have heard the name of this point actually, because unfortunately a couple of fishermen drowned off this point a few summers ago a couple of local blokes I actually knew the other guy on the boat who swam to shore to get help and then swam back out to the boat um, but unfortunately the two men that he was with both drowned they were elderly ish I've just got to put my phone thing down somewhere so I can just take my sweater off hang on I'm just gonna wedge you in here technology I've never gone this way I don't know if I can get the whole way around but it's a bit of an adventure we've been on today I've trespassed a couple of times some of you are hey lovable rogue how gorgeous um Spacey's grateful for what she has. Do not complain. Have a wonderful life. Just have to modify your life. Yeah, you do. I mean, and, and that's the thing. It sucks, right? Um, when well, you said, what's the point, Richard? Do you mean, what's the point? Like, the name of the point? Or um, was I rambling and not making a point? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just going to go off the rocks a bit. The rocks aren't too bad. It's the seaweed that's shit oh it's better with my sweater off now it's hot man look I'm literally wearing a bikini top and a loose singlet now and I'm hot I'm not not hot heat warmth hot I don't think anyone has ever said a 53 year old in a bikini top and a singlet is hot unless it's Elle McPherson oops Hey, if I wipe out, you are more than welcome to laugh at my expense. Motherfuckers. So there's a boat out there doing a spot of fishing. Hi, Raven. How you doing? Yeah, I don't know what, um, what my point was before, Richard. That's a, the downside of some of the chat is I, I get to it, um... God, do we want to keep going this way? Because I could get like halfway and then I have to turn and come back. And it's not a huge hike home, but it's not a five minute one. What do you guys reckon I'll wait? Well, I'll go around a bit further because I've got a feeling I won't be able to keep going anyway, just up ahead. So I'm going to go to the point of no return. This is not the time or place to break your ankle either, by the way. So if I fall over, you can laugh at my expense until I say, um, guys, I've broken my ankle. Don't you love rock pools? Like, I love it. I love seaweed, just the colours. I love all the, how clear the water is. Um, being able to see all the pebbles and everything. You're like, isn't it pretty? And I walk past, I'm just going to wait for the tide to go out again. Sorry, I'll go around without getting my shoes too wet. Oh, hang on. Um, I saw a heap of sea anemones and I was trying to find a starfish. I didn't see a starfish. But I did walk past quite a few other little critters before so if we have to turn around and go back I'll zoom in on them Oops. see I think this is where I'm getting to the part where I'm not going to be able to really go um, 
much further without being able to scramble with both of my hands free. I like a bit of rock scrambling, but you really need to have... Yeah, I'm not going to do it. It's There's too many gaps that I can see. Not that they're massive, but in terms of actually balancing a camera and scrambling. If I had a GoPro on the top of a helmet, I'd do it. Look under a rock. Look at this purple seaweed here. Can you see that? I like how bright it is. Oh, you need to know the name of the point to call triple O. Huh? Why? Go back, be safe. I will. I'm going to show you some little rock pool critters though since we're here. Um, there's all this amazing kelp. And peppered through it is this crazy bright pink seaweed. Like it's visually stunning. Got a little boat out there. They've done a spot of fishing. There's a heap of cormorants, I think, and other seabirds out there. And you can see those, see those white boys floating in the water? Americans would say buoys. We call them boys. They're cray pots. This, this particular part of the area is really popular for cray fishermen. So crayfish, um, lobster. What you guys call... And we're going to go down that road again of the lobster versus crawfish. Now, crawfish are not crayfish. Lobster are. So if you think of your red lobster fast food chain, that's what we call a crayfish. But in Australia, we do also have rock lobsters. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, I know you said you wanted me to look under a rock, but I'm sure I've found more exciting things to look at. When I stop to show you some little rock pool critter, I'll lift up a rock. Just trying to scan for something. I want to find those sea anemones again. I've got a feeling I've gone past them. I mean, as a kid, we used to... There's little um, circular things that look a little bit rude that we used to put our fingers in and they'd close around your finger. I'm trying to see if there's any of those here, but I haven't spotted any. It's just a lot of shells. Um, now I can't even see the sea anemone. Sea anemones. <laughs> it's a bit of traditional Aboriginal uh, art up there. It's not really, what does it say? Graffiti artists, pricks. I think it says most wanted. Shit, now I feel bad that I made a joke. Uh, you can usually find strange. Hey, Will the Rocker, how you doing? Welcome, Groover. Yeah, you can find cool things under a rock. It's just finding a spot where I can bend over and pick a rock up and not fall over and crack my head open because I'm kind of perched on fairly um, slippery rocks right now. I will lift up a rock, but I'll do it when I'm feeling <laughs> uh, like I'm not going to crack my head open. I'm trying to find these other little creatures that we have that live in rock pools, but there's a couple of little shells here and one of them's moving. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. It says I was here. <laughs> 
See that little shell that's moving? I can't see my screen to see if I was holding the camera on it or not, but not very exciting in itself, but all right. I saw a little crab before too. It was black. I haven't seen a little black crab before. Um, okay, I'm going to pick up a rock. I think they're all just going to have rock under them. <laughs> where I am at the moment let me get to one with a rock where it's actually on the sand like here look people treasure I think that little shell that was moving was a like a pee pee it wasn't a it didn't look like it had legs like a hermit crab but you never know See, I think the treasures at the moment on this walk are all in the rock pools. The other thing I always look at is for love shaped shells or leaves or petals. Anyway, oh hang on, here's a sea anemone, found one. See in there that purple shell? I'm not going to pull it out because it's a little living creature and I'm going to respect it. But that's a sea anemone. And in a lot of Asian um, cultures, and even in Australia, there are restaurants that serve up sea anemone. And it's very chewy. I'm not a fan. I love um, seafood. But some shellfish is pretty kind of weird. So I've just found here... Here's a broken sea and enemy shell. It's not as pretty as that other purple one. And then on the end, they're circular, and on the inside of that, there would have been a little living creature that people eat. Same as sea urchins, which have got the big spiky things on their shells. Here we go. Like seabirds and stuff crack open the sea urchins they flip them over where the spikes are they flip them over and then they peck the base and they eat the flesh out of the shell there's another one there I think a few uh, sea anemones and another one so this is a bit of a hot spot for sea anemone eating <laughs> I've got no idea how much battery power I've got yet left. How cool is the reception though? Like I'm walking along a Tasmanian beach and for the most part I always have really good mobile phone reception. It's because I live in a country town. Telstra Countrywide looks after the people in remote towns over the city folk. All my friends are complaining at all. A lot of my friends are complaining about how shitty their internet is and <laughs> I'm, I'm down in this little coastal town with um, high speed 5G having the time of my life. Unless you're a 5G coronavirus conspiracy theorist, which I'm not. That's stupid. That's stupid, like, it's, they've, che they've tested the DNA of the virus. It's come from an animal. It's a scientific fact. Full stop. If the 5G conspiracy theorists are so fucking smart and they know something the rest of us don't, can they explain the DNA in the virus? How does that fit into their theory? Fruit bats, man. I just said bat. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Christ almighty, that's so not going to be of any comfort to the people who've lost family members that these flogs are telling the world that the coronavirus is being spread by 5G towers. 
Holy fuck. That shit crazy, I tell ya. Just gonna get off these big rocks and up to these smaller ones because they are much easier to walk on. Heading back to the... Oh, there's a little track there. Probably goes up. It may just go back up onto the bluff. Or it might go around the top of the bluff. Let's do that. Say goodbye to Red Ochre Beach, everyone. Worst case scenario, this matches up with the road on the bluff and I'll just take the road. I'll find a spot to read chat to when I need to catch my breath. It's quite physical work walking along rocks. You've got a lot more muscles switched on than when you're just walking along a footpath. So I'm having a good little workout today. Can I read? Uh, I'll get up to the shade. Well, some people might be like, there's a woman in our front yard. There's so many tracks down to the beach that hopefully I can walk along the front of these houses. Okay. Um, yeah, hit the like button. I've got 38% battery. Just doing a little regroup between a rock and a hard place. Um, Storms, turn up the music and party on. I worked on the ships for a few years. I love being up above the bridge in wild weather like Lieutenant Dan, Forrest Gump. Yeah, I think if you're being tossed around on a huge ship and you feel safe, that's cool. I, um, I've grown up sailing and I always feel very safe on yachts, even though... I'm well aware of, I actually know people who've drowned after sailing or whilst sailing. Um, but a huge part of being confident on a boat is feeling safe. This weather, this is just such a great view, huh? Um, some of those are poisonous, they have spines. Oh, you're talking about the sea urchins? They're fine. I've been picking them up my whole life. I think it has something more to do with the C-19 comet? No. I mean, I don't know anything about it. Tori the lurker. Oh, well, because I'm lurking near people's houses. I'm just going to social distance from our neighbour. How you doing, mate? You have to what? Um... The lurker. Yeah, we're not meant to stop, but he just came along a little track, so let's take this track. Because this is heading weirdly in the right direction to go back to my place. I haven't done this before with you guys, walking around the top of the bluff. I'm stoked some of you are with me because I'm totally... Um, Wow, thanks for that space. I didn't really need <laughs> to be reminded of my huffing and puffing. Oh, fuck, I've just scrambled over a shitload of rocks. I've just walked up a really steep, steep cliff face. And I don't have my puffer with me. But thanks for pointing that out. This track's cute, it's a little adventure. And I'm talking. And I don't have any water with me, which that's probably the biggest faux pas of today. Ah. 
these guys got a nice little fire pot set up here it's a little cray pot I've never been around this track so we're now up above where I was before down on the rocks like I was down there I don't know the name of the point, mate. I told you to Google it. I'm a Capricorn. I'm like a little goat. Don't worry about me. I will turn back if I don't feel safe. I grew up doing this. This is, this is Hodgie in her native habitat. Even with the puffing, <laughs> spacey. Plus the microphone on my phone is so good, it pisses me off. Picks up every little inhale. Oh, it just feels nice to be out in the sun. These are all these gorgeous succulents. Peace to you too, D90. Peace to you too, gorgeous. And look at these coastal daisies. I've got some in my garden. I've got lots of different ones as well. But these stripy ones, aren't they cute? Like, how pretty are they? I've got heaps of these succulents too. These flowers are all dead at the moment, but when they flower, my God, they're so pretty. You're walking in front of all of these... Um, mansions on the bluff the bluff is the expensive real estate which blows my mind because you can't really get to a beach i mean you can but it's not like my place where i can just walk down the road and i'm on the beach i don't know where this track goes well it doesn't look like it's going further it has to be yep this is an adventure guys I feel like I'm getting a little bit sunburned too. Um, yeah, I mean, all these houses up on the bluff have all got views like this, right? Pretty gorgeous. But it's a bit of a walk to a beach. Not a huge one. I mean, we've just been down there at Red Ochre. And on the other side of the bluff is the surf beach that I live on. But... I like that I can just grab a towel, take a three minute walk and I'm on a beach. Oh look at this little, <laughs> Jesus, oh, they're out, the road less travelled guys. Never ever been along here, didn't even know it existed. We are all exploring this together. Far out. Talk about a goat track. <laughs> Alright, so see down there? That's I think as far as we got on the rocks. What a beautiful place. Does it get very cold in winter? Um Look, it depends by what you define cold. The mainland Australians say that Tassie's too cold, even though Melbourne, the closest big city on the mainland to Tassie, gets colder than we do. And Canberra, the nation's capital, gets way colder than we do. Um, we do have mountains, so we do get snow. But even our highest mountain um, slash snowfield is only a medium slope. That's the best or the hardest level of ski slope you get. Like we don't have any black runs on our mountains. Um, and really only the mountains get snow on them. So the mountain that Hobart's at the base of gets snow on it. But Hobart the city doesn't get snow. 
and and where I live the average is probably I don't know 10 12 degrees so maybe think like 40 I don't know 45 Fahrenheit that kind of range maybe even 50 that's about as cold as it gets it's very rare for where I live to go below zero in fact I don't think it ever has hey guys we're out in the we're out in the um you know what's the word <laughs> the wild I'm not balancing on the edge of a cliff face anymore I'm so going to give Spacey shit next time I see her. I'd like to see her do that. Little hike without panting. Um, I think we're kind of almost now heading round the point. Possibly. And we should get to the other side of the bluff. And it's a very short walk from there to my house. Obstacles. Bit of a car park. I bet this is a bit of a lover's lane. So there's tracks heading down that way. Look at that. Hey, Rustic Mockery, how you doing? Well, officer, I wasn't there, but we saw her after the succulents at the point. We weren't told the name of. Yes, we did try and tell her to turn back. It's hard to imagine it not being too cold as you're so close to the southern hemisphere well we are in the southern hemisphere oh you mean like the south pole no it's still a long way away from here i mean in a tasmanian winter's sort of like an english summer <laughs> that's the ongoing joke with my english friends you know like in the and we get a lot of sun here um i'm going to just stop for a sec um we get lots of sun here we it being a little island the clouds blow over. It's not common here to have three days in a row where it's overcast and grey and rainy. It's a really dry place. We're in drought. So um, it's not a damp place. Like it's a dry climate. And in winter, you know, you can be sitting in a cafe. Well, you could have been uh, sitting out in a ca outside a cafe or a pub in the middle of winter just in a T-shirt and being perfectly warm because of the sun being out. But at about four o'clock, um, that's when you start layering up. But not just in Tassie. I've lived in Adelaide, Melbourne and Sydney and I've layered up and put cardigans on in pretty much all of those cities in the afternoon. I think that's pretty common the world over. Unless you live in the tropics. Um, so anyway, let's keep going. I thought this might be interesting though for those of you who have seen me on the beach and you see when we walk towards the bluff where all the surfers are that we're now walking around the top of it and the house is up there it's basically the bluff look at that even that view just through there back to seven mile beach can you see that with the sun on the water um so yeah there's a circular road that goes around the edge of the bluff and biscuits vet is just on the other side like she goes to a vet that has a million dollar view. <laughs> it's like, your view, view is wasted on the animals. Maybe they do look at the view and appreciate it. Who knows? Biscuit's going to be pissed off with me when I get home because she's been getting so much attention. And I really needed to go for a walk. And, um... She was walking towards the front door as I was leaving it. She, she's gone from being this independent, aloof animal who would quite happily sleep all day in a little hidey hole somewhere. 
you know, not pay any attention to me at all. Now it's like I'm her living 24-7 entertainment. Happy! How you doing? How you doing, gorgeous? I'm completely out of breath, mate. I've been, um, I've been taking these fuckers on. We're walking around the top of a bluff near my beach. But before I got here, which as you can see is pretty steep, I've pretty much walked up to this height. Um, I also scrambled around rocks and a cliff edge <laughs> and I'm pooped. I didn't bring my water and I didn't bring my puffer, but that's okay. We're getting there. And I'm 53 and unfit, you know, like. So yeah, there's the little road that goes around the bluff. And look at that view, Groovers. That seven mile beach over there. My pleasure. Happy. I'm enjoying taking people out and about because I know, I know even before coronavirus, um, or this branch of it, that you know a lot of people who watch YouTube um, a lot of them are housebound so here's Rocky the Whale um, a mosaic community project so there's the whale's head this time there's a few um, benches welcome to the whale trail so yeah, we get a lot of whales down here. Not at this time of year, the water is still too warm. But coming out of winter, sort of winter spring, um, in the beach that I live on, the surf beach that we walk along is just through those trees. Um, we get southern right whales down this way. Um, the, the, the husband and the wife, <laughs> Here we go. Here are the southern rights. The uh, poor buggers, they get lots of barnacles. They're not very pretty. Um, but the male and the female come down together and then the male keeps heading down to Antarctica and the mother, whatever her name is, what is she, a doe? I can't remember. She stays in our beach with the cub. No, it's not a cub. Is it a cub? I can't remember what a baby whale is. Someone Google it. Um, and they teach the baby how to breach and do all the sort of survival things. See, there's one there. A mama with a bubba. Calf. The baby's the calf. What's the mum? Is she a mare? I've got a weird feeling like the female whales have a name that's, you know, like another animal has too that you wouldn't connect. But anyway. So, yeah. Um... And you've got these whale migratory patterns around Australia. And then here's Tassie where I am, this little heart-shaped island at the bottom. And so here's Tassie and then this migration trail going down here and coming into Dodgers Ferry where I live. Um, that is the humpback whale. So we also get the humpbacks in here. Hey, Aussie Owl, how you doing, mate? We just... Um, we're hanging out with a mosaic whale right now. This, uh, I've already forgotten his name. Rocky. Rocky the whale. Uh, this is literally, I don't know, a 10 minute walk from my house. I've never been here before. I mean, I drive around the bluff. I take my cat to the vet up here. Um, I've taken a neighbor's dog up here. Oh, a cow. That's it. Yeah, see? A calf and a cow. Yep, so I didn't even know about this mosaic. So basically, Ozzy, what I've done is I walked over to Red Oka Beach. Um, I trespassed along the way a couple of times. And then not this part of the cliff, but round the corner. Have a look at the cliff, right? Um, so on the other side of the bluff, I started off trying to go around the rocks. And in the end, I put... had to reverse back and out and then essentially ascend the same height as that cliff over there 
but on a really narrow goat track on the edge of the bluff on the other side. Red Oak is the nude beach. It's actually more likely to be my the surf beach, to be honest, the beach I live on. Red Oak is the young family's beach because there's no surf, so they take all their little piss-weak kids there because, you know, they can't handle the wave. <laughs> So yeah, the nudists are more likely to be frolicking. In fact, I've gone live with, I don't know who was, who's in chat now, who was with me that day, but we were happily strolling along the beach and these two naked chicks just ran in front of me and I was filming the whole time and it was only sort of when I got closer, I was like, oh shit, I just filmed two naked chicks running into the ocean. And I don't want to be rude, but they weren't really the sort of naked chicks most people would want to see running into the ocean. They are, uh, they're probably called Leaf and Piper and they had 70s porn bushes. But other than that, they were lovely, I'm sure. I mean, even if, you know, if you've got a 70s porn bush, be out and proud. The other thing that was a bit odd about it was it looked like a mother-daughter combo. But yeah. I mean, all the surfers, we're always half naked when we change out of our wetsuits on the beach anyway, so... You don't really, I don't think there's a surf beach in Australia that doesn't have some nudity on it at some point. So we're kind of cross countrying back to my beach, my beach, the beach I live on. But yeah, it copped a bit of flack for being breathless and puffing and panting. Uh, you needed two Sherpas. It's a great view, isn't it, Happy Cubed? Like, seriously, have a look at it. Look at that view. You only like naked, drunken chicks in your bed late on a Saturday night. Yeah, I feel the same way about dudes, to be honest, mate. Um, and I only like them in my bed late on the Saturday night. I don't want them in my bed early on Sunday morning. Like, go home. <laughs> I'm not cooking your breakfast. And the only reason I'm not like that really, I haven't really had many one night stands in my life, but um, I think I have actually cooked pretty amazing gourmet breakfast for most of my sleepover buddies. But that's the problem, right? I cook for them and they're like, shit, you're a really good cook. And the next thing I'm dating them. That was not the plan. That was not the plan. Wham, bam, thank you, Matt. Yeah, they do need to piss off. Aussie, you're right. I mean, I'm happy to pay for them to piss off. I'll pay for them to take an Uber. That house is so cool. It's got this huge day bed in the garden. And I wanted to show it to you, but the man who lives there was in the garden. I was like... really cool setup sort of had like Balinese pavilion decking and a bit of cover and this fucking one and a half king size bed day bed now wait till you see what we're about to see you're gonna pee your pants with excitement guys like seriously you are we're now when I've taken you along the surf beach walking towards a bluff and pointed out all the surfers well here we are but on the bluff side of it how cute these people have got a little setup look at that little setup they've got a great setup out the front of their house too with a really funky fire pot and big table but yeah have a look guys I'm so glad I couldn't go on the rocks. It would have taken me half the day. <laughs> How cool is this, guys? They did work for their bed. But yeah, so when we walk along the beach, you can actually see, I don't know, I can't do distances, but you can see in the sand dunes a white sign really clearly from up here. And that's my, the track that I walk down on. So I'm zooming in, see that where that white sign is. So when you guys come for a walk with me, that's where we come out. Um, 
my house is up on the hill halfway up that hill but you can't see it my place is sort of tucked in behind a lot of trees um, and then we often walk this way and we do a bit of a surfer report and here they all are bloody wicked I can't make the clipboard fuck off oh and now I've made chat disappear too all right chat's back cool yeah and then um down the other end of the beach we have walked all the way down there before to Carlton River I'm trying to zoom in again so that river up the end hopefully you can see it now so that's Carlton River which is also stunning and then um, here's a bit of a sweeping view for you where's Barry <laughs> where's Barry uh, good point mate and I'm not going to walk along the beach to find him because it's not that far from my house well I mean I could I could but I mean what a stunning day and of course there's heaps of surfers Adam if you live down this way why wouldn't you be because we're lucky so far that although we've got a few, few fuckwits who aren't following the rules we haven't had to close our beaches like other parts of Australia because of a heap of fuckwits um, who couldn't follow a few simple rules so we're really lucky at the moment but everyone's making the most of it um, while we can I mean it would be an absolute shame if we weren't able to walk I mean I, I built a house on this beach so I could walk on that beach every day we were talking earlier about um, mental health and stuff and I've never had to take any kind of medication for any sort of mental health issue even though I live with pretty hardcore anxiety but I'm, I'm positive that a huge part of me being able to manage it is because I get to walk down there every day or do what I just did and practically break my neck scrambling over rocks and walking along the edge of a cliff. It was exciting. If anyone wants to replay this, if anyone's joining me on the replay, I'm just going to say good day to you right now. Uh, nice effort, Groovers. How the fuck did you get this far along? Been listening to me wheezing like an old man with emphysema for the last hour or whatever. Well done. Well done. So, yeah. Tassie's a very pretty place. There's there's not many places in Tassie, parts of Tassie you go to that aren't pretty. But I'm a bit biased. I think I live on the prettiest beach. This little beach down here is kind of cool too, where all the rocks are. It's not really a beach because there's no sand, it's just rocky. Now, how the hell do I get through without trespassing although I've already trespassed a couple of times so a bit of aloe vera aloe vera can I go along here or are my scrambling days over yeah I think my scrambling days might be over guys I might have to go out onto the street unless this track goes in front of this place this place has got to have one of the best views in the world like seriously this house look at their view <laughs> the girl of emphysema was a great song could you do a cover for me Ozzy oh Anne-Marie's back Anne-Marie's probably like cleaned her house from top to toe again and done a 10k marathon been to the shops, taught a school, a room full of school kids and she's back and I'm still crapping on on the edge of a cliff. Yeah, the girl from emphysema. I think I will need to bring my puffer with me next time though. I'm a bit, now I'm feeling a bit um, conscious that my huffing and puffing was pointed out to me. <laughs> a bit self-conscious. Good old respiratory infections. Oh shit, there was a little um, skink. Not respiratory infections, just respiratory ailments, conditions, whatever the word is. I think I do all right though. 
Just going to give you another view from the top of the bluff. So there's the car park we often walk down into, right? And um, who doesn't have a puff to puff when you're walking up and down here? Well, exactly. I'm alright, lovable. These are deep breaths for me. I'm afraid I've got pleurisy, so I'm not a heavy, like I... I do yoga and by the end of the class I can get my lungs filling up almost to the normal capacity of a lung on a normal healthy lung but <sighs> deep breaths I want Aussie to do a cover of Girl from Emphysema for me <laughs> alright so we're now going to take the track down to the beach quite often at night all the people who live up here on the bluff, the bluffies as we like to call them, they've got to walk down this track with their surfboards. That's what I'm saying, like, as nice as their views are, like say these guys here, they've got to walk down with their boards and then walk back up with them. It's not fun. I mean, these guys are okay because they're pretty close to the beach. But the ones around the corner, after I had ascended Brokeback Mountain, <laughs> um, bit of a hike, you know, with a board. You know, narrow little goat track, heavy surfboard. I mean, I, I'm also picturing me carrying my surfboard because I surf on a longboard. I surf on a Malibu longboard. And it's an old wooden one from the 50s and it's a beautiful piece of equipment but it weighs a friggin' ton. Like it's two people. So yeah. Strawberry. <laughs> Strawberry yoga. You've got all the cheesy one-liners happening today. I like coconut yoga. And the other day, second time I've been out to go shopping or anything in the last month. Um, but the other day I went to the shop and they've got these little tubs of chocolate flavoured coconut yoghurt that are normally eight bucks for a really small tub. They were, they were going to expire the next day and you can keep eating yoghurt for a month after it's expired date as long as you've been opening it and stirring it, right? Well, I think you can, but um, it's coconut yogurt. Four bucks. Four bucks, I was like, you beauty. So here we are. What an elegant descent. Uh, it's quite a few folk on the beach. Everyone looks like they're being pretty good with social distancing and all that sort of shit. There's groups of two. It's hard to tell with families though, like, because I think families are still allowed to go out in a group as long as they don't hang out with other people that don't live in their house. Feet, shoes off. Look at me bargain shopping. I know, mate. I'm not posh. I'm not posh. So here we are. I've got my feet in the water, which I love. On the wet sand at the moment, I'm gonna get in them in the water. Not a huge uh, swell at the moment, but I really don't think anyone, oh, okay. That initial, oh yes, don't forget you're in Tassie, you dickhead. But I've gotta say, I, in the height of summer here, when we have a 40 degree day, and we only get three or four of those a summer, um, but when we do, the water down here in summer can get up to like, oh, there is an okay swell. I mean, it's not great, but it's, they can get up on it, just. Um, 
I can't stand it if you go on holidays somewhere tropical and you're on the beach and it's stinking hot and you're just busting to have a swim and cool down and you get in the water and it's hotter than it is out of the water. I like that little wake up call you get in Tassie. I mean, we swam in the water all year round. I didn't know as a kid. I thought every beach on the planet had water temperatures the same as us. I didn't know it was freezing. It was only when I moved or traveled to places where the water wasn't like bath temperature, but was warmer. I was like, oh, oh, okay. Our parents making us get up to go for swims at five o'clock in winter. Probably child abuse looking back on that. Possibly. <laughs> nah, what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger, right? Can't really see much of the chattery. Hang on. Oh yeah, in Bali, yeah. I, I could see Aussie you're talking about. Is it Long Bongan you're talking about? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah, the water in Bali. I, I used to go to Nusa Dua when I went to Bali. That was kind of where I'd hang out, but um yeah yuck yuck I like I like getting really warm on the beach and then doing that dash into the water and it cools you down but if I went for a swim today down here I'd be in a wetsuit it's at that it's at that point even though I'm walking along in a little skirt and a tank top um, <laughs> and I've actually got a bikini top on as well, but I'm not going in the water. Like, I'm warm, I'm comfortable wearing what I'm wearing. But if I went for a swim, I'd probably either, if I didn't have a wetsuit on, I'd run in and run out. I don't think I'd be floating around out there. Dreaming of pina coladas and the like, you know. Hey Seraphin, how you doing? If you went for a swim here today, you'd be in a coma. Yeah, well, it's a good hangover cure. I've, sw I've sworn by this my whole life. The best hangover cure is to run into Tasmanian, into the Tasmanian Ocean, go under, come back out and eat a crunchy, fresh crunchy apple. I swear to God, your, your brain freezes and you, your hangover's gone. It's brilliant. I mean, you can't speak for like the rest of the day and your lips stay purple for about a week. But other than that, you're not hungover. So, you know, small price to pay, right? There's Barry. Who was asking about Barry earlier? Bazza, the beach slut seagull. He's up ahead. Got my Achilles tendon is caning. That's the one thing I wish I had was some efficient or effective magnesium. I broke my, um, I snapped my Achilles tendon in year 10 and I was bummed because I had to go to our school formal in a cast. An Australian crawl plate at us at our school formal because one of my year 10 mates was shagging someone in the band. And, um... <laughs> I didn't know that when you're young and you have injuries like that, they treat them... The way they treat stuff when you're young, when you have those injuries, is for a young person. They don't treat you like they would treat a middle-aged or an elderly person. Um, so when you get to middle age, all these little things that you had go wrong when you were a kid and they weren't treated properly, now they come back in the form of um, tendonitis. And... I mean, apart from pointing my toe and doing some pretty ballerina-type exercises, there's really not much you can do. I think you can get an operation if it gets to the unbearable phase. But like my brother had um, double arthroscopies in his kneecaps as a school kid too because he was a really full-on footy player. And he's now starting to have the same kind of feelings in his knees <laughs> they don't tell you that like I wish in hindsight they'd go well your kid's athletic career is over but 
if we treat it like they're 87, they're not going to have to deal with a painful tendon in the joint for the rest of their life. Or when they hit middle age. Look at me walking on this beautiful beach whinging about my health. My pleurisy and my fucking tendonitis. There's a sign up there up to the track back up to my house. So I might have a quick chat with you Groovaroonies. And head home and make some lunch. What's everyone had for lunch? I want some ideas. Um, Amory, I'm in Tasmania, Australia. Hold on, go back to the shagging. Who's shagging? Being there. G'day. You did miss the beginning, but when you're bored shitless, a few months from now and you've got an hour and, a, hour and 41 minutes to spare you can say hmm what do I feel like doing I might watch Tori scale a cliff walk on rocks I went a completely different way today Mem so you might want to you could put it on um, can you speed it up because <laughs> I, I went on a full on rock scramble and then it got to the point where I needed both of my hands and feet to scramble properly like there's going to be a little bit of rock climbing going on so I had to do a U-turn and then I pretty much walked up onto the top of that bluff got a little bit out of breath understandably copped a bit of shit about that from Spacey who has conveniently disappeared and um, we've just walked around the edge of the bluff and come down onto the beach from the bluff And the miracles of life guys we've just done it it's probably why my tendons sore every every muscle in my bones were, my body was switched on when I was walking around the edge of the cliff that was I might watch a little bit of the replay to see if it looked scary because I was right on the edge of it I should put some um, Tom Cruise Mission Impossible music. I'm kind of, but well, I'm, I'm glad we didn't end up going around the rocks because, yeah, I, I wouldn't, it would probably take the whole day to do that. I didn't realise how big the bluff was when you're actually walking around it. I sort of naively thought I could just go whoop, around the corner. Repeat what I said. I said about my friend. Bazar now I'm confused. Oh Richard, you're having a barbie tonight. Bit of fried rice on the side. Nice. I can't keep up. Now you're all confusing me. Pumpkin soup? Good, good. Pumpkin soup, homemade. Yep, if it's homemade, I love it. I love it. So I'm going to sign off. Um, you've already heard me puffing and panting enough in this video. You don't need to hear me now going up through the sand dunes, which some of you know are steep as well, because I see those houses up there. Mine are the same distance away and the same height up back. So, yeah. Someone's made a little sand castle. It's not going to win any competitions, but I'm giving them... I'm not giving them a participation ribbon. That sand castle shit. They get nothing. So there's Baza out there washing his lady before he gets to catch up with Shazza. And I've looked up and down the beach and I can't see Shazza. So... Baz has got a bit of scrubbing to do. Um, there's another little sand castle down there. Also piss week. Piss week. But take care everybody. Um, enjoy your barbecue dinner, Richard. Enjoy the pumpkin soup. Um, thank you for coming on me on the, with me on that extraordinary adventure. Holy shit. I was like, I'll just go for a walk for half an hour. An hour and 40 minutes later. So I'm going to go back to my cat who probably wants to murder me now and uh, still can't believe I've got a cat. 
I keep pretending she's a dog. She kind of is a bit like a dog. Anyway, on that note, <laughs> stay safe everyone. Stay at home, save lives, stay connected. Stay connected and stay groovy. Bye everybody. Miss you too, lovable rogue. So good to see you, beautiful. Take care, everybody. Bye being there. Bye, Richard. Bye, Anne-Marie. Bye, Ozzy. Anyone else who's still around? Love you guys. Take care.